All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar here. We've got a pretty cool webinar going on. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm uh, Jeff Johnson here, Technology Marketing Toolkit and MSP Success Magazine. So welcome to this uh, uh, webinar call here today. And we've got how MSPs can build a strong security foundation using five easy to follow tasks. And I've got Michelle and Sean as our experts on today's call. Pretty cool with this. I'm gonna start it off actually for everyone that's on, I've got a poll that's coming in here. And so if you wanna just go ahead and there's a four questions on the poll, we figured that we would kick it off uh, with you guys answering those questions. So if you don't mind there, it should have popped up on your screen. But I wanna make sure that we really get into the content on this because I know you guys have a ton of information to be able to share. Uh, real good information for everyone, but then also how Lion Guard can, can solve a lot of the issues of what you're going to be talking about. And so, uh, Michelle and Sean, I'm going to turn it right over to you and, and, and let you get rolling on this. All right, sounds good. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen and go into present mode. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, we're seeing it good. Yeah? All right. So. Today we're going to be talking about how you can strengthen your MSP security posture. We're going to be talking about how LionGuard supports the NIST framework and CIS controls specifically. So if you have a chance, go ahead and fill out that poll. We'll give you guys a couple more seconds. Sean and I want to know who's in the room, what are you guys interested in learning more about today? Are you a current LionGuard partner? And you know, what is your role at your MSP? The more we know about you, the easier it is for us to change what we say a little bit, you know, depending on who our audience is. So, Jeff, can you go ahead and end the poll now so that we can review who we're talking to here? Yeah, absolutely. I just ended it there. Can you see the results on that, All Michelle? Right. I think you need to uh, share the results. If there's All a right. share yeah, with, there yeah, go. perfect. Okay, so do you currently conform to any security standards? We have 20% of people looking to conform, 32% are already um, using the NIST framework. Um, we have some, oh, New Zealanders in here as well, other specific, industry specific ones. So HIPAA, got it. Um, wow, 40% of people that are not currently using any security standards are conforming. This is gonna be insightful for you guys because we'll, we'll go over some of these different frameworks. And then um, we have three line guard partners in the room, a lot of people who are not currently partners. And then we have about 80% of you guys are CEOs, founders. We have about 10% service managers, some technicians, um, and some people who work in a different role at their MSP. I love this question. How confident are you in your MSP security strategy? So we're about 50% at a three. So you guys, there's some people who are really confident at five, some people who are like, eh, we're not really sure about it. So, all right. Let's go ahead. We're going to dive in here. I am going to let Sean introduce himself and then we'll dive into the content. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Sean Saylor here. I am the VP of Sales over at LionGuard and looking forward to speaking with you today. But most importantly, you've got a lot of knowledge on the other side of the line with me today uh, with Michelle. Yeah, so I am the director of product research. I am the voice of the customer, the one that's really interviewing MSPs, trying to understand what are your needs, what are the pains that we're helping solve with our automation platform. So let's go ahead and dive in here. So this is going to be an interactive session. We encourage you guys to use the chat to ask questions in the Q&A. Here's our first question. Why does cybersecurity matter? I want you guys to use the chat here just in your own words. It seems like a lot of you guys care about cybersecurity, you're looking to conform to cybersecurity standards, let us know in the chat, why does it matter for you? So as you guys are writing up those questions, I am going to uh, pass this over to Sean here. Sean, why would you say from, you know, your perspective and your experience in the industry, why does cybersecurity matter? Well, I believe uh, cybersecurity is, it's, it's important for everybody, you know, the, it's up to the individual MSP to make sure that they're providing a high level of security for their customers, but it's equally as important for the customer to provide security for themselves. Uh, but sometimes they're just not as knowledgeable about what, what scary things are out there. And so they need guidance or advice from the MSP. And that's what they look to you guys for is 
being an advisor to them to make sure that they are adhering to security best practices, not exposing themselves to undue risk. Nobody wants to be a victim of, of a cybersecurity breach. Um, and it, it's just, uh, you know, all around it's, but it's important to make sure that you convey to your customers that it's not just your job to maintain security. They have an equal um, uh, opportunity to, to help make sure that their environment is, is secure as well. It's, it's a co-managed situation when it comes to security. Yeah, and so we had some other participants in the chat. So Brent says, customers need to comply to get business. So yeah, so for you know, an MSP, you need to make sure that you're compliant you know, so that you can keep your customers secure. And then Tom says, I cannot have or afford my clients to experience a breach. So you need to protect your customers. You want to keep them safe. And Daryl says they have a few customers that need to hit the NIST level between one to four. We need to document changes and add um, document changes for servers with CUI data. Um, and this is a moving target. We hear you. We hear you, Daryl. So yeah, something that we like to say, and I think this is a very fitting analogy right now, is that cybersecurity is not unlike public health. When there is a flu or when, you know, COVID happens, there's a reason why the health officials are really pushing for a vaccine because we know if you are infected with the flu or with COVID, you're more likely to infect the people around you. The same goes for cybersecurity. If there's an infected computer in a network, it's more likely to infect the other computers and, and assets in that network. It's a shared responsibility, right? As MSPs, you guys are responsible for managing cybersecurity for all of these different companies. So one compromised client, that impacts so many different people here. And this is really about protecting you, your business, your clients, and everyone in your networks. That's why we're here today, and that's what we want to be talking with you guys about. So we're going to be sharing two cybersecurity frameworks. We want to level set here. A cybersecurity framework complements your existing cybersecurity and risk management efforts. So this is not to replace anything you're doing. This is, hey, how can you be even stronger, strengthening your security posture? It's about protecting your clients and your business, building trust with your clients, and then fostering the security mindset with your employees, right? You want every person on your team to really recognize what needs to be done to keep your clients secure there. So today we're going to be talking about two, the NIST framework, and then CIS controls. So CIS controls are a little more specific. We'll dive into that. We're going to start with NIST first because these are more general. It sounds like this is where majority of the people in the room have some experience here. So the NIST framework, this was developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology with the U.S. Department of Commerce. If you are a United States MSP, you've likely heard of it. Uh, if you're a New Zealand MSP, you might not have, but we're going to go through it. So the idea here is that there are five functions or tasks that you need to do to protect the systems that you're managing. So you need to identify the assets that you're managing. You need to be able to protect these systems, detect when there's an issue, respond when there's an issue, and recover. So this is a really general framework. This was developed for any business, not just MSPs. Okay, so these, uh, everything that we're going to be talking about today can be applied to any business. Now, this gets really technical. We're going to stay high level here, but underneath each of these different functions or tasks are categories. So these are more specifically, what does it mean to identify what you're managing? What does it mean to protect these systems, detect, respond, and recover? So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk through these specific areas that LineGuard can help with. We can help with asset management, risk assess assessments, access control, data security, maintenance, protective technology, in the detect function, we do a lot here, which is really great. I can't wait to show you guys more about that. Detecting anomalies and events, security continuous monitoring, having those detection processes, helping you guys communicate when something needs your attention, and then recovery planning. So let's go ahead and dive in here. The, the first function that we want to cover is identify. So being able to document and standardize data collection. Now, NIST, this is underneath each of these different categories is the actual NIST verbiage for what you should be doing to protect your business and your clients. So we have asset management and risk management. So to comply with NIST, you should have a complete inventory of physical devices, systems, software platforms, and applications within the organization. So, Sean, can you tell us a little bit about how LionGuard can help and, you know, for what systems can we help with asset management and risk assessments? Certainly. You know, uh, for instance, you need to know what's out there on the network. Uh, LionGuard can help you discover what's out there. 
all of those devices that are connected within the network with our with our network discovery capabilities. You'll be able to know the manufacturer, the serial number, IP address, any open ports. Uh, beyond that, uh, one of the critical systems that LionGuard does give you deep visibility into is Active Directory, which is a mission critical system. In there, you can see a full list of computers, servers, workstations, whether they're active or not, and whether they're under support from Microsoft, for instance. And from a risk standpoint, LionGuard will help you identify the gaps in those systems. For instance, are they properly configured to your standards or to industry standards? what doesn't meet those standards or strays from those standards. So you want to be able to continuously have some eyes and ears in what's going on in all of these systems. Yeah, absolutely. And then I see, um, oh yeah, we have some other people just chiming in on how cybersecurity matters. That's awesome. Yeah, so as Sean was saying with, with risk assessments too, something that we'll show you guys when we actually log into LionGuard is how we can get some of these things into your team's queue. So with our customizable actionable alerts that you can have sent direct to your PSA when something needs your attention. Now that takes us straight into the next NIST function, which is protect. You should be auditing and man managing changes daily. This is an impossible task when you just have humans that should be looking at all this data, logging into all these different portals. It's a game you can't win. And that's where an automation platform like LionGuard really comes into play because we can help with these NIST functions. We can help with access control, with logging maintenance, with data security and protective technology. So let's start with access control. This is a really important one, and this is something that every MSP can see the value of. So NIST says that you should have identities and credentials being managed and audited for authorized devices, users, and processes. Sean, how hard is it to do a user audit in LionGuard with critical systems? Uh, it's, it's very easy. You know, uh, two of our uh, you know, key systems that I talked about uh, earlier, one of them being Active Directory, the other one being Office 365. So for instance, an anomaly or an event would be like a suspicious sign-in from remote parts of the globe. If you've got a company that's headquartered in say Houston, Texas, but you've got users signing in in Madrid, Spain, you know, uh, that's gonna be uh, something that you wanna uh, know about, right? And it could be that they're traveling, but it could be that it's out of the ordinary, right? Um, so you wanna uh, uh, get, a, get a grip on that. Some other things like in Active Directory, for instance, brute force attempts, it's not uncommon for people to have a few, you know, uh, times where they forget their password, which is pretty common within users. But when you have multiple uh, bad password attempts, then those are the types of things that you need to be notified on, right? And, and so that's a good sign of uh, a breach that's about to happen or somebody's being targeted or a group of people being uh, targeted. Um, in some instances, some, sometimes somebody goes on vacation, right? And why would somebody be logging into their account or trying to log into their account, um, you know, when, the, when they're on vacation? So um, a good, good uh, sign of things that could be happening maliciously from somebody that's internal. That's, um, you know, going back from my days in, in the financial services world, some of the, the worst crimes were people um, in, internally, right? Um, and so when they know somebody's on vacation that they try to, um, you know, t take over uh, their accounts and do some malicious things. Yeah, and I think that really leads into one of the other critical pieces that LineGuard can help with is this change management across all systems. So this is something that MSPs that I talk to say, whoa, you're bridging the gap between all these vendors. Not only do you make it easy for us to see who has control of these systems, we also can see when changes are made, right? So we can look at this change management across all these systems. When new users are added, we can get these alerts sent to our PSA. And you know, when it comes to protective technology, so looking at audit log records are documented in accordance with policy, we have this historical timeline that I can't wait to show you guys when we get into the app that actually lets you go back in time to see when these changes happened, to get some situational awareness, because that's really what you need when, if there's a malicious actor, you wanna understand what's the impact, when did this happen, and you know, what, what do we need to do to, to start addressing this? And then the last piece here is data security. And this is one where we've heard, I've heard countless stories from MSPs talking about the value of having all this firewall firmware information in one place that's easy to sort through to be able to verify, hey, do you have all these firewalls on a supported firmware version? If not, 
how can you just easily export a report of those firmware versions so that your team can use that as project work? So we are going to jump into that. One question that we got in the chat from Jonathan was, do you guys support Azure AD? Yes, we do. That is one of the newest inspectors that we've rolled out. So we can, we'll make sure that Sean shows that when we actually jump in to the LionGuard app. Now, before we jump in, I want to go over these last NIST functions. So the next one after, you know, you set up these protection systems is detect, alerting on misconfigurations. This is where LionGuard is really strong. When I interview the CEOs of our, the MSPs that are our partners, I say, what's really valuable? They say, the fact that you can tell us when things change, the fact that we can get notified of anomalies and events, the fact that you're continually monitoring and you have these detection processes. So Sean, can you talk us through, when we talk about security continuous monitoring, how do our in inspectors work? I mean, what, what are we talking about in terms of like time frame, et cetera? Yeah, I think that that's one of the most beautiful things is, is uh, a lot of you are familiar with using these one-time assessment tools, which is great for a point in time snapshot of what may be happening in a few critical systems, but Roar is providing a continuous assessment. So every day by default, so every, you know, once every 24 hours, and in some cases you can, you can up that threshold to, you know, three to four times a day, depending on the system, uh, you have constant eyes and ears and what's happening in those systems. So instead of having those one-time assessments, think about having those daily routine checks in all of your systems across the stack, not just a handful of those critical systems, all of those systems. In my opinion, all systems are critical, right? The landscape has changed a lot, so you, you have a lot of surface area um, to cover. It's not just about servers and workstations, it's all that other stuff. Um, and uh, when Roar detects, and I think you're gonna get into this in just a second, uh, uh, Michelle is the detection piece. I think that's what's awesome too is you don't want to force your team to necessarily go to another app to identify that something took place, right? So Roar has the ability to actually push uh, when it detects something that takes place, it pushes that ticket right into the place where your team's already working, right into your existing uh, ticketing solution. So if you guys are using ConnectWise Manage or uh, Datto's Autotask or uh, anything else out there, um, they can receive an email alert um, at a minimum, then you can get those alerts in those other systems too. Yeah, and so that's great. So when you get this ticket, the great thing about LionGuard is that we have a lot of context in our ticket body. So we'll let you know what happened, and these are fully configurable. You guys can add anything else, any other context that you want your text to have when they get a ticket like this. So we have these very detailed alert information, and as Sean said, this is available for, you know, whether you use Autotask, whether you use ConnectWise or any other PSA that you're using, we have an email integration there. Um, so you guys can get this information in front of your text in a consistent way. And that's really what NIST cares about is incidents are reported consistent with established criteria. You have record of it. And that's really what we've established with these integrations with our ticketing systems. The last piece of this is, okay, we've identified an issue. We've sent you a ticket to your PSA. How are you going to recover? And this last function is about maintaining resiliency, recovery planning. NIST says you should have a recovery plan that's executed during or after a cybersecurity incident. Where LionGuard can really help support is with this historical data that is helping you rebuild configurations after issues happen and then monitoring for future that you've actually met this. So, Let's go ahead. This is a really general overview of NIST. I want to, before we dive into the app, I want to talk about the distinction here with the CIS controls. So again, as we talked about with these five functions, general concepts, some more concrete things, Sean will show us in the app how you guys can get to value with these specific things. When it comes to CIS controls, these are more specific than NIST. So these are, and these are global, okay? So we have cybersecurity experts from around the world saying, hey, these are the things that you need to do to mitigate cybersecurity set threats for any business. So we won't get into the nitty gritty here. We have some resources that we're gonna share with you guys, but here's the, the concept here. There's, these are 20 actions that your team can take. We have these basic, it starts basic here. So these six basic CIS controls, 
these are foundational for any business, whether you're running an MSP, a pizza shop, whatever you're doing, these are the basic controls every business should meet. Once you meet these basic controls, they say, all right, foundational is the next thing that's recommended to really strengthen your security foundation. The last piece of this is organizational. This is really about the people and processes. Do you have these in place to actually make sure that your people at your team and your company are adhering to all the, the great stuff that you put together there. So what we have, and I am gonna go ahead and have, um, Ali will, will drop this in the chat. We have how LionGuard can help here. And let me see, um, I'm just gonna really quickly stop sharing and I'm going to go ahead and share a link to a spreadsheet. Um, I'm actually gonna share the spreadsheet. Ali's gonna go ahead and drop the link there. This is a resource that we have for our partners. We have a few partners in the room. Make sure you guys download this. If you are not a partner, this will be more valuable when you do become a partner. Basically what this is, is for any system, we can say, all right, for Active Directory, all the alerts that we have in LionGuard, what CIS control do they support? So you can check any system that we have here. Um, so let's go ahead and let's actually check, you know, Office 365. So we want to see Office 365. I can see all of the controls that we support with these alerts. So really great resource. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. What I want to do now is actually have Sean jump us into LionGuard so we can talk through specifics here. All right. Awesome. I think we got uh, a couple uh, questions. I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, miss any over there. Uh, one person did ask about uh, integration with Kaseya BMS, in case you guys missed that in the chat. Uh, so today there is no direct integration with Kaseya BMS, but we can fire an email alert and create tickets over there. We are actively uh, exploring a direct integration, much like we've done for uh, ConnectWise and Autotask, but no direct ticket integration um, from our API to theirs uh, today. So hopefully that answers that question, but if there's more, keep them coming. Um, I like it, Mike. Kasey API is easy. All right, I'm going to give a screenshot to our product team, Mike, just for that. You making notes, <laughs> Michelle? <laughs> I'm making. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. Oh, Justin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. All right. Justin, all right. We got a partner no. in the room. We have a shameless plug from a partner in the room. This is great too. If you see what Justin Justin just posted. Oh, he just posted it to panelists. Justin, make sure that when you leave a comment that you post to panelists and attendees so everyone can see it. I will go ahead and copy this to send to everyone. Oh, there we go. All right, Justin's got it now. So Justin is pointing out, we have an ideas portal. We really build our roadmap around what our partners want. So that's what's really guiding us. So Sean can just really quickly jump in here. I love that Justin just put this here. He knows that we care about votes and comments here. So um, he's plugging in an alert on or a, an idea on email notifications. But yeah, Sean, I'll let you take it from here. Do you want to talk okay. through anything with the ideas portal? And then let's let's just dive right in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it looks like somebody already dropped uh, one of the ideas. So there, we do have ideas.lineguard.com. Um, we are very active with our uh, partner community. Uh, they, they do have a heavy influence on our roadmap and, and, and completely make this product what it is today. So um, if it weren't for awesome partners that were already on the journey with us, we wouldn't be who we are or where we are, right? So um, they, they dream up the ideas and our awesome development team, they bring it to life, right? So let's dive right into the app and, and don't be afraid to uh, be shy, ask questions. Uh, Michelle, inter interrupt me. Um, I did make a note, uh, somebody asked about Azure AD, so I definitely wanna cover that as well. Uh, but quick, a uh, couple quick house cleaning things. So when you refer, uh, when you first log into Roar, we refer to your customers as an environment. So if I talk about an environment that's simply a customer out of your PSA, the systems are those systems that you're supporting for them in the cloud network and on-premise. Alerts are those actionable alerts, those things that Roar detects in a system that needs your attention, could be a critical change, could be a misconfiguration. And then there's this discovery capability where Roar has the ability when one system is inspected, if it detects that another system exists there that we can inspect and document further, then we're gonna do that. So at its core, by the nature, what you're going to see is we're going to help you solve some of those fundamental things that you need for those CIS controls, for instance, right? So um, some fundamentals, you got to have some good documentation. You need to be able to tell how something is configured or if it's misconfigured. You need to be able to detect what's changed in there. So you're going to see some common themes when I'm running through some of these uh, key systems. So uh, really quickly, uh, just want to make sure 
Um, just to highlight, I always find that this resonates with a lot of people uh, because ev all of your customers have internet domain and DNS records. So for instance, Roar Auto discovers these through our integrations with some key systems, like if you're using ConnectWise or Autotask or you're using a documentation platform like IT Glue, we can bring in those customer domains and we can automatically inspect and document those. And what you're gonna notice is this standardization of documentation. You don't have to worry about one tech documenting something one way and another tech documenting things another, but you'll see things like where the domain is registered when it expires, where the DNS is hosted, where the website's hosted, where the email is hosted, but we're gonna go much deeper than that. We're gonna dive very deep into those DNS records. Now this is the type of stuff that your team will repeatedly get burned by, okay? Somebody making changes or misconfiguring these DNS uh, records. And so we'll have a full record and history of these, including subdomains. There's about a, a dozen common subdomains that we look for by default. And where we start to unlock this data is you'll notice this timeline that Michelle mentioned earlier. This is where you can start to rewind back in time. And what's powerful is Roar is always capturing changes in these systems. But when critical changes take place in these systems, we're gonna highlight that for you um, on uh, the timeline. So you can, uh, the timeline actually goes back for a year. I'm gonna show you some examples of some changes in some other systems. But uh, we can, uh, you know, when things break, it's because somebody made a change to something somewhere. I'm sure you've all been the victim of some, somebody changing some DNS records. Usually it's at the hands of a, a web guy somewhere that, that overstepped his bounds and, and deleted a record or changed a record and all of a sudden things stop working. Well, now you've got full visibility and have some context. You're not spending your wheels trying to figure out what's going wrong. Now, this data is stored in something we call a data print. And because it's stored in this data print, we can get very granular and watch specific pieces of information. We call those specific pieces of information metrics. And it's those metrics that really make the data even more powerful because it's these metrics where we can detect changes, we can detect um, uh, misconfigurations, right? And we, those are what trigger those alerts that I talked about. So just for domains alone, for instance, there are, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. So we call those alerts actionable alerts. So there's over 300 built into Roar for all of the systems that we're supporting in the cloud networking on premise. And we'll make sure you guys have a good understanding of all those systems that we have integrations to today. But for domains alone, there are 17 things that we can watch for. So let's find, you know, a couple, um, you know, key things that, that are security related specifically. So for instance, if something is security related, Roar is going to tell you why, what it is, why you should be concerned, what a malicious actor would do, and what do you need to do as the MSP to go remediate that issue. And so this text is what lands in that ticket inside of your PSA. You don't have to go to Roar to see that. Now, for the sake of time today, I'm not going to show all the different PSA integrations, but if you'd like to see that, I want to encourage you guys to do a one-to-one -one demo with my, with my team. Um, but um, we, the, my point is, is, um, now you can control what is said in those alerts as well. So there's a lot of built-in alerts, but if you want to customize this alert to include additional text, remediation steps, or data from Roar, you can add all that information in there. So the ability to customize those alerts, to tailor it to how you operate your business is very powerful. And we're doing that for all those systems across the cloud network and on-premise. Now, because we've got those metrics, imagine you're you're supporting multiple customers, right? And you wanna look at critical metrics really rapidly across all of your customers. Well, you can go to a systems view, which is a global view, and that'll give you deep visibility into a single system and have those metrics shown to you across all of your customers. So here, I've selected four key metrics that matter to me in when it comes to internet domain and DNS records, okay? Now, those internet domain and DNS records um, those are uh, those are the things um, that uh, you know that they're the fundamental uh, piece that ties to all the other technology that's out there. You know, for one, I want to see which customers have domains that are uh, expired or coming up for expiration. I can filter, search, sort, report, and export this data. Now, if you guys are familiar, uh, recently in the last couple of months there was a breach with GoDaddy. Well, maybe you want to maybe you're managing 60 customers. You want to see who's using GoDaddy. Who are the customers that you're going to have to go shore up uh, their passwords, change their credentials, whatever the case may be, right? Or maybe you want to see who's using Office 365. Well, one, you want to make sure that they're buying it from you as an MSP, but two, you want to make sure that it's properly configured if you're on the hook for supporting it. Now, 
SPF and DMARC records, those are security related. Now, if you had to go around to 60 different customers and use three to four different sources to manually see if SPF and DMARC records are present on your customer's domain, think about how much time that's gonna take you guys to do. So Roar's gonna do that for you automatically. It's gonna make sure it's perpetually kept up to date. But I can quickly see in short order which of those customers don't have um, that uh, information configured. So we're doing that same thing for all of your customers. We're inspecting them, we're documenting them, we're capturing and tracking changes, we're reporting on those metrics that matter to you, and um, you can also do side-by-side -side comparisons between a couple of time lapse. So I'll get to that um, at the end. Now, let's take a look at a, another um, a key system that, that somebody brought up a little earlier. So this is um, Azure AD. I wanna highlight this one because what I like about this is there is a lot of movement, a big shift to the cloud that's been taking place, especially over the last four, five, six years, but now it's even more prevalent than ever. When Windows 10 came out, now you start to see a lot more of these serverless environments and you guys are probably using them, right? You're moving to those uh, serverless type solutions like Azure AD because you guys are all Microsoft partners. Well, Azure AD is starting to become this mission critical system that gives you visibility into those endpoints. Well, um, at the user level, I wanna have some deep elements about those users that are connected to Azure AD, right? I wanna see, are they active or not? I wanna see if they have uh, MFA enabled or not, right? Password policies. So there's a ton of information that we can pull in here and it's all kept in that historical timeline. Well, what about groups, right? When people are dropped into groups in Azure AD, just like they are with any other groups, like if you're doing it at a, at a local Active Directory level, that gives them access and privilege to do uh, certain things, right? So you wanna control who has access to certain uh, groups, but you also have administrative roles, okay? So I've got a few other columns here um, that I can highlight, um, but there's several uh, pieces of information in all of this data. If you've got a laundry list of a bunch of people in here, it all becomes um, uh, filterable. So I can filter it, I can look for specific things, like show me you know, just the people that have uh, you know, uh, this active, right? Um, I can go into my audit logs. Now this is where we start to get a little bit deeper into the weeds when it comes to security, right? Um, down here, specifically, I wanna highlight user sign-ins within the last 24 hours. Again, if you start to notice uh, some anomalies in here and people logging in from cities or places around the globe, that aren't are, are a little out of the ordinary, then you start to you can you can uh, see or prevent bad things from happening. Sometimes you don't know what's happening out there, and that's the problem. Is a lot of you guys are running with blinders on, right? If you're only managing all of these uh, customers with just an RMM and just a ticketing solution, you have to have full visibility into all those other systems that those those end customers are are touching. Now. If any of you are using Intune, I'm starting to hear this a little bit more. So this is also, Microsoft is maturing this quite a bit so you can get a lot of device management capabilities when it comes to Intune. You see a lot of MSPs that are using a combination of their RMM tools and Intune to manage those endpoint devices, right? So you start to bring in all this information about any of uh, the device compliance policies, uh, device configuration details, you also have uh, device enrollment configurations. So there's a ton of information in here, uh, role-based access control role list. So they're, they're just yeah. a, a plethora of information. So Michelle, was there a question? Something, yeah, so something that I wanna point out here is that as Sean's showing, we're looking at one system, Azure AD, we're pulling back tons of information. Our goal as a company and as an automation platform is to unlock this data for your team. Now we got a question from Brent that I wanna answer live here because I think this is something that really mystifies a lot of people when they realize what we're doing. Brent says, how do detectors work, an appliance or something on an endpoint? I think that's a great question. It really depends on the system. I'll let Sean talk a little bit through that. I, in the chat, put in the docs for Azure AD. All of this is hosted on our doc site. We let you see how we're pulling this information. But Sean, do you want to give a little background on the different ways that we come at this information? To yeah, pull into yeah. Our platform? So, yeah, so, so the way that we're inspecting these systems, there's an agent that's part of your subscription that's hitting the majority of these systems. So if I, if I were to go in here and I could look at um, just the ones that can be inspected from our cloud agent. So 37 of the 42 systems 
that we have in production today can be inspected from our cloud agent. So there's nothing to install. It's only if there are on-premise systems like Windows servers, Active Directory, SQL, your hypervisors like VMware, uh, Hyper-V, if you wanna do a network discovery where you deploy one of our on-premise agents, it's actually the exact same agent that's running in the cloud as part of your subscription, except it's sitting securely inside the customer's firewall. Well, if they don't have any on-premise server for that agent to run on, then there, you would use just our cloud agent. But when we inspect these systems, we're gonna hit these systems in the same way that a level three engineer would. So it's gonna be either, either via API, PowerShell, CLI, or SSH, right? We're always gonna go down the path that gives this the richest high fidelity data to bring back, right? So um, this isn't doing, you know, SNMP um, or doing high, bringing back high level data. You'll notice that this, there's deep, rich configuration details because how those systems are configured are really critical to your security, right? And so when you start to unlock that data, right? So when you, when you, when you have full visibility into how those systems are configured, now you can see who doesn't meet your security baselines when it comes to your configurations, whether it's Active Directory or it's a firewall or anything that you have out there, right? Um, or who strays from those baseline security configurations that you want to adhere to because somebody made a change. Now, sometimes it's not your team that's making the changes in these systems. And that's the other part that, uh, that is pretty scary. And I wanna make sure, if you think you're the only one that is making changes into your customer systems, you're gonna get a black eye along the way. I can almost guarantee it, right? Because a lot of times the customer's making changes or a third party may be involved or introduced or worse, there's a malicious actor in there. And so you always, need to have full visibility into what changes are being made into a system or how those systems are configured. Also run into MSPs that say, hey, we deploy you know, Meraki out to all of our customers. Um, it's easy, we can manage it all from their cloud portal, which is awesome, but then when you start to look at how those separate organizations configure those sites, they all are running with default configurations, right? That's a scary place to be, right? And so you start to unlock okay, my guys are going out there, they're plugging in some things, but they're actually not configuring. They're not doing that extra two, three steps that, that we want to make sure is done every single time. So that's where you, you want to make sure you have full visibility in there. Uh, any other questions out there, uh, Michelle? Yes. So there is okay. one from Daryl. I think it's a great question. So Daryl wants to know, is there a template to follow to get Roar tailored to the first slide with NIST and what it helps with? I would be interested in more detail on how we can tailor to that. I would like a NIST template that I could go through and select the actual alert and test with a client of mine. Daryl, this is a great question. You are tracking with us 100%. So we have mm -hmm. this concept of templates in LionGuard. What we do have is we have an example template that we say, hey, if you are just getting and starting LionGuard out of the gate, we recommend you know, starting with this example template, these are, you know, the most critical alerts for all these different systems. With that being said, we're building out more security focused resources. You know, as someone said before, it's like a moving target. There are so many things you can be tracking. Our goal is to figure out how do we cut through the noise and help you track just the most critical things, right? You don't want 1000 tickets in your service desk. You want the most critical things. So we're going to be creating more um, stuff for partners, more webinars, more um, templates for partners on that. And then Sean, I don't know, is there anything else that you would add here for like the way that the templates work specifically or anything else that we would add for someone like Daryl? Yeah, so uh, backing up just a little bit real quick. So these rules or these alerts, if you will, they're driven by metrics, right? And metrics are simply looking at that data print, right? So we've got tons of built-in metrics that are simply once they're toggled on, now you can track changes against them. Now you can create rules against them, okay? Um, so without going too far in the weeds and how uh, that, that works, um, it's those metrics you know, that, that drive these alerts. Now these alerts, you're simply gonna pick and choose which of these matter to you. Like Michelle said, you're not gonna turn them all on by default. There are some standard things that we do for you during our onboarding process that at a minimum that you should start with and then you kind of scale up from there. But you're simply uh, picking which of those alerts you want to enable, you're applying it to a template, and then you're simply applying that template to your customer's environment. Now, if you have a baseline template, or maybe you have different levels of service, right? 
or different security requirements that you want to adhere to. You could have a template for one type of security requirement, another template for another type of security requirement. You guys have full control over that. When I go in and I want to build a template, I have the ability to automatically apply that template to any customer that I add to Roar future, right? So it'll automate when I add a new uh, environment to Roar, which is a customer, it'll automatically apply that, that template to it. I can make that um, one of my standards. Uh, but you also have the ability to go in and tweak those templates as well. So if you start off with, let's say there's, you know, 40 things that you want to watch for, right? Um, and all of a sudden you determine that, hey, for this one customer over here, I only want to do 38. There's this just this one off for this one customer. Well, I can clone my standard one, remove the two that I don't want to include in there and make a new template and apply it to just that customer's environment. So you've got full control over this. And I think that that's one of the most powerful things that we released um, in Q2 of this year is for you guys to build your own customizable actionable alerts uh, and change notifications. And you have complete control over that. And if you're using Autotask or you're using uh, ConnectWise Manage, you get to control which service board those alerts go to as well. So even granular at the ticketing level um, on the PSA side. Michelle? Yeah. So, okay. Daryl added a little more context, which I think, think makes sense. I understand the first sheet, do you have a baseline of the alerts that should be selected for NIST? So we went over two cybersecurity frameworks today. The NIST five functions, those are really general. So you should be identifying the systems you're managing, protecting, detecting issues, having a communication strategy and responding. What we did is we mapped our alerts to the more specific CIS controls. So we're saying Roar as a platform can help just with the gen more general NIST functions. When it comes to the actual specifics of how do you mitigate cybersecurity threats, that's where we have this um, spreadsheet here that will show you how these things map. Daryl, if, if there's more specific questions and you're a partner, reach out to your PSE um, or your account manager, and we can set up some time to talk more specifically on that. Another question that um, came up that I think would be good for us to address too, is this one's from Mike. Mike wants to know, are there subscription tiers or is, is it one subscription that includes everything? Yeah, so great for question. Yeah, yeah, so we, we have simple uh, pricing. You guys can go check this out. Um, we do want to do something special for the folks that are, uh, that are uh, on the call with us today as well. But if you go to LionGuard.com, you click on buy now, you're going to see the pricing structure that's out there. So it's a fixed flat fee per customer. All of the systems that we integrate to are included, including our enhanced inspectors. And I do want to make sure we have time to get into one of those um, real quick, like Windows, uh, SQL, or Linux are considered enhanced inspections. And those are uh, Windows is, in fact, our most popular inspector out of all of the inspectors that we have. Uh, we give you deep configuration details, so I certainly want to highlight that. But you can go to this page. You can see the full list of inspectors that, that are included there. These are all included, folks. Um, so it's a fixed flat fee per customer. Um, and uh, as Michelle's wrapping up some things in a minute, um, I'll drop some things in the chat for you guys when it comes to uh, pricing. But I want to encourage you, if you're interested in learning more, want to have a one-to-one -one demo, I want to encourage you to uh, request a meeting with one of my uh, representatives and they will walk you and your team through this because we want to make sure we address all of your questions um, unique to your specific needs, right? We're not here to boil the ocean, solve all the world problems, but we are trying to solve as many problems as possible in the MSP community because our roots are from your side of the fence, right? So we came from your side of the fence and uh, you know, we, we, we don't see it as um, we're, we're selling you guys services. We're selling you the ability to solve the problems that we know you have. You deal with it every day. And so we want to automate as much as possible. We want to help you get a handle on these uh, security things that you're running up against. You don't want to get those black eyes out that are out there. If we can help give you visibility into what systems are out there, how they're configured, prevent bad things from happening, but you can't prevent every single bad thing from happening, but you need to keep them from spiraling out of control when they do happen. And so Roar is going to help you in, in, in those contexts um, uh, as well. All right. So uh, Michelle, any other questions? And I, I want to dive into a couple other uh, things. So uh, all good questions so far. Yeah, no, um, there's no other questions that I've seen in the Q&A. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A now. If you have any requests on systems that you would like to see, we'll let Sean 
take us on a tour of a few more systems just so you can yep. see the level of information that we pull back. And then, yeah, right. any other requests, just drop them in. Yep. So uh, another uh, key thing uh, uh, that I wanted to make sure that, that we touched was uh, Active Directory, right? We talked about asset management, right? So think about what's connected to Active Directory. And this is a mission critical system. You want to know what your domain account policies are, right? You want to know if there are any group changes that are taking place. You want to have a full list of your users. Are they active or not? Are they privileged or not? Uh, what groups they're a part of. When's the last time they logged in? Any bad password attempts, right? When is the last time they changed their password? Uh, what, uh, you know, what groups they're a part of? Uh, I talked about that. But you also have a full list of your groups, and you can see the members there. Remember, all of this data is filterable, searchable, sortable, reportable, and exportable. And you can actually do a full system export, and it'll export as a, a, full, a, a full Excel file with all these tabs will be individual tabs on the uh, uh, Excel sheet as well. What about computers, right? What's no longer in support with Microsoft anymore, right? Are the systems that are out there, are they even active, right? Are there any stale machines? Was there something improperly removed, right? Um, any new machines that were added in there that you need to account for that you don't have your antivirus on, right? Or you don't have your backups on. Um, so those are all the types of things that you're gonna be able to um, uh, dive into from an asset management standpoint. And again, you've got um, you know, this change track and timeline um, and uh, when there are uh, changes that take place in a system, you notice how there's a little delta here. So I'm gonna use this as an example, right? So there's a uh, delta, so these are tracked changes. Roar's always capturing changes in systems. You don't wanna be flagged for every single change, only those critical ones that you deem important, right? Um, but when I go to the changes tab here on the left-hand side, now I can start to see things like anything added or new, right? So new user added, they were added as a privileged user, right? So I can see um, those types of things that are happening in the system, right? Members of an admin group in red and strike and uh, with a red strike through, this is what it was before, right? Down here at the bottom, and this is what it is now. This is showing who those uh, privileged users are in that specific system. But Active Directory being a mission critical system, Roar's got a lot of built-in alerts, right? So um, let's highlight a couple of these things, right? So if somebody becomes um, uh, a privileged user in Active Directory, I wanna know who it was and when it happened, right? I need a record of that from an audit standpoint, okay? But I certainly wanna make sure if I didn't do it and my customer did it, I'm gonna have a conversation with them. But if my customer didn't do it and I didn't do it, I know we got a bigger problem. There's a third party or malicious actor involved, right? So these are the types of things that can come over in those alerts in your, in your PSA, right? A new device is added, um, a new user is added. Those are the types of things that you wanna get a handle on. Um, and uh, so, so uh, there's a lot of powerful things that you can get deep visibility into Active Directory without having to poke in to that system. Every time you have to log into a system to get this information or dig for that information, that's time and time is money. So think about that. Your team needs to be empowered with this information at their fingertips. And this also levels the playing field for the entire team to have full visibility into that client, whether they're a level one person or a level three person, right? All the knowledge of a system shouldn't be stuck in some level three's head he or she should be able to evangelize it. Like any changes that were made to a system can trickle down to those level ones and level twos because they can see those changes that took place. Okay, uh, I think I saw another question pop up. Uh, was there another one out there, oh, Michelle? That was just me. I was, oh, okay. I was just chiming in there saying, this is really the most valuable thing. When I interview CEOs and founders of MSPs, they say change detections in history are the most valuable part of LionGuard. It's like this safety net, right? And the great thing about it is that, as Sean was saying, we're unlocking this data for your team. We're not going to hold it hostage. We want, you know, you can have unlimited users in LionGuard because we want your team to be empowered to find the information they, they need to be able to do that root cause analysis, that troubleshooting when they need it, all here in LionGuard. And that's really our mission is great that you have all this documentation, but how is it helping you better do your business? How is it helping you better support your customers, keep them more secure? And that's really what Sean's getting at, showing you guys all these different things, like the different alerts that we have, the reports that you can pull. And that piece of taking this data and turning it into action is where we're really focused on and where we're trying to empower MSPs to strengthen their security foundation. Yep, yep. So a couple other key things. Now, I didn't show um, Office 365. I'll show it briefly. But 
couple while I'm on this actionable alert. So 365 is a mission critical system. There's nearly 40 built in inspectors that have been inspired by other MSPs that have paved the road before you that are already working with us, right? So critical changes. Again, somebody becomes a privileged user in 365. Somebody adds a new user, a new mailbox. Those are the types of things that I want to look at. But what about your users who are your weakest link, right? And you may be supporting hundreds or thousands of those users and they click on one of those phishing emails. What do those bad actors like to do? They create forwarding rules that gives them a copy of everything sent and received to some bogus Gmail account. Well, you simply do not have the cycles as an MSP to go around to every single one of your Office 365 tenants to detect if this has taken place. But Roar does, right? So Roar becomes this extension of your team to help secure those environments. So this would be an example of, hey, you something you can't control. You can put all the stop gaps you want in place, but your users, you can't control what a user does all the time, right? It's impossible, right? So if they do something that exposes themselves, you need to know when that happened, right? And, and, and who, who was it, who was it the, in, in the uh, grand scheme of things? Now, 365 um, is certainly one of our most popular inspections. It's also one of the most simple uh, to set up as well. So it has a parent-child relationship. So as a CSP partner, you set it up once, it auto discovers all the tenants that you support underneath it. And now you can get some visibility into things like, you know, is AD Connect enabled? If so, when's the last time it synced? I can see licensing details. How many are active versus assigned? I don't want to leak any money. I want to make sure I get alerted on any unassigned licenses. But at the user level, I want to see who has which licensing. Are they privileged or not? Do they have multi-factor authentication enabled or not? Are they even active, right? Um, if not, I want to get them out of there. Uh, since we're talking about security, I want to highlight Microsoft Secure Score. Huge fan of this, right? So this helps you get a handle on how you guys are configuring all those 365 instances. If you're only running with the default configurations out there, you're really exposing yourself to undue risk and exposure. And so we want to make sure you get a handle on that. Who doesn't meet your security baseline requirements or who strays from those, right? And so all this information kept in this historical timeline, again, the timeline goes back for a year. When things are added or changed in there, you're going to have the change track and timeline. You can go to the changes here so I can see a new group was added on that day, right? I've got a full audit trail of what's taking place in those systems. One final system that yeah. I wanted to hi highlight real quick. Michelle, was there another question? I was just going to say there, as you guys can see, each of these systems, it's like a universe, right? So they have their portals. They have tons of information for your team to dig into. If we, if you guys are interested in seeing other systems, we're going to have Ali drop in the link for scheduling a custom demo. During this custom demo, you can go through any of the systems that you want with a sales representative from our team. So we will drop the link in the chat now. Make sure you schedule that custom demo to check out all of the data that we can pull back for these different systems. But go ahead, Sean, let's jump into Windows Server. Yeah, so Windows Server, one of our most popular inspections. I know you guys all have your RMMs, and to be clear, you still need your RMM. Your RMM is a remote monitoring management tool. It's gonna to tell you if the system's up or down. It's gonna allow you to make changes to that system. Think of it as taking your pulse. Well, Roar's more like an MRI. It's doing a deep, configuration inspection of that system and, and keeping the historical context for you. You don't get that from your RMM, the historical context. And if you look at what your RMM is pushing into your PSAs or your documentation platforms, it's usually only about six to nine pieces of high level information. And in order for you to get this depth of information, you would have to run a bunch of commands and scripts or hire somebody to just, that's all they do all day, every day. Uh, but now with Roar, you'll see things like, you know, what is the role of the server? You'll see specs on the machine. You'll see drives, shares, printers associated with it. But from a security standpoint, I want to know who has access to this server. I want to make sure that there's no local user access taking place on this server. That's what malicious actors like to do. If they have physical or remote administrative access to a system, they're not going to always come in as a domain user. They're going to create themselves a back door. Well, Roar can alert you on those types of things. You can see um, groups. You can see roles and features enabled on that server. Software. What about something being, you know, everything was working fine two days ago and then everything went haywire. Well, you have the ability to rewind back in time and see what software changes took place. Services running on there. 
network configuration patches? What's checking to see that the RMM is doing its job? What if the RMM is pushing a patch to a server, but you find out the hard way that it didn't successfully install because there was a reboot, reboot required or something didn't properly push to it, right? You don't want to get those black eyes, and that's what we're doing. We're giving you visibility into those systems, which is why this is a really um, popular um, inspection. And to wrap things up, I want to make sure you know, so we've talked about a few individual systems. There's 42 production um, uh, systems today. Does that count right? I even, uh, I, I know we just added another one. Is that 42 or 43 now? I think it may, it's 42, right, uh, Michelle? Yeah, 42. Um, we, okay. we added a preview one, but it's not ready yet. Okay, It'll be 43%. All right. Yeah, so, so at the individual customer level, what if you just want to have a quick snapshot? Maybe you're a technical account manager, right? So you have an overview screen that can quickly get you those metrics, those top metrics that you want to see in each of those systems in the cloud, network, on-premise apps and services. But on this screen, I also have a 90-day look back at any critical changes that took place across all their systems. If I want to look at a specific system really quickly, I can see just the changes in that specific system. I can see any open alerts. But I can also do a point in time, a time-lapse comparison between any two dates in time, beginning of the month, end of the month, beginning of the quarter, end of the quarter, any two dates, and I can have meaningful conversations with my customers to make sure, you know, so for instance, hey, you know, um, uh, earlier uh, in, in July, you had only Tom in there as a privileged user. Now, we don't like Tom being in there. Okay, this is what it should look like, what it was at the beginning of the year. Okay, so Tom's in there. Now, you also added Nestor. We got to get these two guys out of there, right? We can't have individual users with privileged access in Active Directory, or maybe um, there's a stale user. Why is Megan not lo no longer logging into the system? Maybe there was a termination event, right? Maybe they forgot to communicate it to you, or even worse, they did communicate it to you, but you didn't take Megan out of all the respective systems that she had access to, right? You can quickly um, search this data to find all the systems that Megan is listed in, okay? So um, I know we got just a couple minutes left here, and Michelle, I want to make sure that I turn it back over to you um, to wrap things up. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I was just going to end on our last slide here, which is how people can learn more here. So we dropped the link in. If you are more of a phone person, you can go ahead and give us a call there. Um, the number is there. You can press option two to speak with our, our sales team. But again, there's a lot to unpack in this platform. We think it's really a valuable tool that can help you guys strengthen your, your security platform and your security posture. So feel free to get in touch with our team. We're open for any questions. Do you have a training course? Well, that's a great idea. We don't have a training course. Um, well, actually, we do have uh, onboarding courses. Yeah. That's one yes. of the most beautiful things about our platform. Um, I was th thought he was talking about security specifically, but we do have comprehensive um, onboarding called Smart Start, which is a series of these training sessions with our team. So we go over everything from how to roll out line guard to how to get the most value out of line guard. And then we have webinars for everything specific, like how to set up a report, how to, you know, set up your actionable alerts. We have all of that training there. And then Sean just dropped in the link for our smart start journey, which is the training for onboarding MSPs. All right. I'm going to pass it back to Jeff because we have one minute left in our allotted time slot. All right, well, awesome stuff. You guys are definitely passionate about this and super knowledgeable, which is what I love uh, having you on this today of uh, going through. If you guys haven't already clicked on the link, I highly encourage you to, to go there. The, the link's in the chat. It's also on the screen, a little longer on the screen than it is in the chat. So uh, do, do the, uh, the, the quick one on the screen, uh, or sorry, uh, in the chat there, and, and get that custom demo scheduled talk to their team, you know, ton of stuff in here. We saw right at the beginning of this call that almost 50% of those that were answering the survey were in that, well, I kind of feel a little bit that I'm doing security in here. So this is the way to move that from that two or three all the way up to that four or five and getting it done so that you've got not only your uh, MSP secured, but also your clients as well. So Michelle and Sean, Thank you so much for, for taking the time here uh, on a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we'll definitely also get this uh, posted up on MSB Success in the archives uh, as a webinar that's out there uh, as well uh, of doing it. Any last words that you guys have? 
Yeah, I just want to encourage you, if you want to uh, uh, invite your team, do a one-to-one -one demo. They're quick, you know, 20 to 30 minutes with one of my uh, regional sales managers. You guys can dive into the weeds, into your specific needs. It'll be tailored to you uh, and your, your existing stack, like which PSA you're using, your RMM, any documentation platforms that you may be using today. Uh, uh, so I want to encourage you guys to book your meeting. Um, and when you do book that meeting, just remember to reference Robin Robbins and they, uh, I dropped it in the chat, but you guys can get uh, a tier discount on your rate and also no bill, um, until October 1st. Um, so you get to use it, um, for the next, um, 60 days, um, essentially, or, you know, the rest of this month and, and 60 days completely free. Um, and our onboarding is waived for you as well. So, um, the smart start onboarding, um, it's just designed to make sure that you guys succeed because we don't if you don't. Um, and so we invest a little bit of time with you up front. All we ask is you follow that onboarding process and we're going to guarantee it as well. So if it doesn't do what we just showed you today or what my guys um, show you in those demos um, individually, then uh, you're not on the hook for anything. So we know you're going to be 100% satisfied. It'll prove itself. Um, and that's all I've got to say. Thanks, Jeff. Awesome. I will give you one last thing for, I'll, I'll, I'll task Sean with this. Sean, I think I need a lion or something on, on my wall here behind for our webinar. So uh, maybe if you can, can find some lion guard swag to, uh, that, that I can do something. Oh, we, we got an awesome marketing team. So I'm sure we can make that happen. <laughs> we can't just let Datto over here having the, uh, the, the big signage. Yeah. Uh, there, hey, so. we, we, we love the Datto guys, you know, so um, that's all right. Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it here. And with that, we're going to wrap up the webinar. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.